In today's episode of the Pathmonk Presents podcast, I'm with Kim Lyons, and she is hailing over from Upmetrics, where she is the marketing director. And it's a very interesting tool for a very good cause. And today we're going to be learning much more about what Upmetrics is all about and, you know, how the specifics of the industry where she's in shape her perspective on digital growth. So welcome to the show. Thank you. I am really excited to be here. We are. So um, give us an overview. What is Upmetrics all about? Yeah, so Upmetrics is uh, unique. So it's an impact analytics platform that really helps any social good organization. So that could be, um, you know, impact investors, it could be schools, it could be uh, for profit companies that are focused on social good and giving back to their communities, anyone who's sort of doing that work that's looking to drive impact. And it's taking all the information and data that they have, and it's translating it into visualizations that really help them articulate their impact in a way that inspires action. So that could be, you know, attracting volunteers, it could be attracting funding, you know, whatever it may be, and uh, doing that through uh, a story. And so to do that, you kind of have to have more insight into what you're doing, how it's working all in real time and, and tracking progress towards those goals. So you have that information to then share it back, right? So uh, at a high level, that's what the platform does. Uh, the big item that we focus on and, and really differentiates us from others is that we uh, provide the ability for our users to uh, aggregate both uh, um, quantitative data sources and qualitative in one place. And so it's pretty unique um, compared to others. And it really, again, comes back to that story element that if you just look at quantitative data, you're not going to have that full picture of all your activities and that impact you're making. And it's going to be really hard to tell that story of how you're driving change and working towards your goals without that qualitative piece. And so we're really excited about that. It's a really big part of, of the platform. And uh, briefly, without diving into too much detail, um, the, the company is unique, I think, and, and something I haven't seen before. And that we actually were founded by uh, a family foundation. So this was, you know, so in a real instance, the, the now CEO, uh, Drew Payne, his family were giving money to nonprofits in the Bay Area focused on uh, youth-based development. And they were saying, you know, you're doing all this great work. We want you to, achieve, you know, to get more and more funding. And they weren't able to articulate their impact or show it in a way that, that you know, was able to get the dollars they needed. And so uh, from there, Drew and, Drew and his family said, let's solve it. And, and it's so great because I think too often, I'm sure you Lucas, have seen the same that, you know, we, we see these problems and, and we look for opportunities to um, improve, but it's so rare that we kind of really double down on, on offering that support. So it's really exciting. Super interesting. I mean, it's such a multifaceted problem that you guys are tackling. Um, exciting, exciting. I mean, because there's tons of, you know, charities, tons of organizations that want to bring impact, but it's very, very hard to articulate you know, what Absolutely. Is, what is yeah. And it can mean, you know, it can mean a lot of different things too. I think that's the challenge of, of how you define it. Uh, and then of course, you know, in the last year we saw um, a lot of, you know, societal challenges just become even more complex. And so it just became so much more important and almost up the ante, I think both um, from pressure in your community that they want to know kind of what you're doing, but then also just you know, your self accountability, if what I'm doing is it really actually making a change where we need it right now? And if it's not, how can I pivot and make sure that it is just because, you know, we're at a, such a such a turning point and, and that help was needed uh, across a lot of different communities. Interesting. Um, who would be typically raising the hand and say, we need something like Upmetrics? Like, is that like, um, uh, head of operations? Is that like a CEO mm -hmm. because they need to show proof? Is that, you know, is that the CEOs of the organizations? Maybe tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So we're in a really interesting situation that everyone is bought in on the idea, right? So they, if they get it from the CEO to um, the grants manager, who's kind of working with nonprofits uh, every day and trying to get, you know, their impact metrics and, and translate that into a story. So that buy-in is pretty easy, although I'd say it usually starts with the CEO, uh, that impact reporting is important to them and they want to be able to show, you know, what they're doing and the change that you're driving. And so that has to be a part of the culture, right? That kind of idea of innovation. Um, we really do well with our clients that have an environment where, um, you know, reflecting and improving is important. We don't just focus on what worked. Let's kind of go through too where we learned along the way and, and what the data showed us. So I think that really is top down, like I mentioned. Uh, there's also a role, it's it's usually a, a measure, a measuring uh, and evaluation 
uh, role or a lot of times in nonprofits or foundations, it is um, a learning officer and, or something along those lines. And so those are really the folks that we can get in there. They have an appreciation for the data. They know what it's like to just pour through spreadsheets, trying to connect these different data sources and turn that into some sort of report that can articulate the incredible work they're doing. It's so hard. Um, so they're really the ones that, that see the platform and they say, wow, you know, not only will this save me time, but it just will really allow us to articulate um, the change we're driving in a, in a new way. So curious to see in a couple of years if Upmetrics will actually derive impact metrics that are more defining, like how you measure it, because that seems to be something that you know has mm -hmm. to be defined at the first place. Super. Yeah, we, we try to help a little bit. The data maturity scale is, is great. <laughs> it varies depending on who you're talking to. So I think that you know will be really exciting. And then also um, sharing of information. So is there a world that, right? So we have all this data now um, and we have all these conversations of how people were able to track progress in their learning. So can we help to be kind of a hub that people could come to and kind of learn from each other would be really, really exciting. Super cool. Um, you as a marketer, right? Um, with, uh, there's a complex pro problem. There's different personas that are sort of, you know, related to the problem. How do you think about the journey of somebody getting started? Like, what are the sort of the channels that you are exploring? Sure. So uh, it, it varies a little bit. So the way we started, we mentioned this a little bit before we um, get it started uh, on the call, is our platform is really flexible. And so anyone, like we said, can be um, a, a potential client as long as they're measuring or, or uh, they're working towards this mission, right, of, of driving impact. But uh, there's very much different variables on who's a good client right now or a good prospect. And so that's really where we've been struggling because as you know, you can't um, feasibly, unless you have an infinite budget, which we do not, spoiler alert, um, you can't really uh, scale with intention if you aren't able to narrow down really what that low hanging fruit is, what your unique positioning is and, and where you can go from there. And so that's really been, I'd say the big, um, both challenge for us in the client journey is we have so much opportunity, but um, we don't have the luxury of, three-year buying timelines or, you know, a nurture stream that lasts for you know, a whole year or anything mm -hmm. like that. So um, it's been kind of zeroing in slowly based on different testing, uh, you know, in different ad platforms. We're really big, uh, mostly on Google ads and LinkedIn is where we see the best ROI. Um, but let's just test, test different targets, build out these profiles so that we can be really um, optimal in our dollar spend and also getting the most qualified leads to, to our sales team, which in the end is obviously um, the most important. And so we have found a really effective way to do that is actually focusing on pain points, which has been really, really exciting because I think traditionally in other roles that I've been in, you tend to lead with the technology. And for us, it, good and bad, right? We're so young, that brand awareness isn't there, that trust isn't there. And so we were seeing lots of engagement with our ads, but low conversion rates on those landing pages not a lot of urgency. Like I said, that sales timeline was looking pretty long. So when you flip the script and we start saying, which we do understand the problem, right? Like I said, we're all from this background. It was founded from this foundation. You know, we start leading more with you have this problem. It's, you know, it's really hurting your ability to achieve your mission. We'd love to help you, right? We all want to work towards the same goal of, of you getting to, um, to this area of social good or impact. And that's the other cool thing, right? We can all agree that that's a great outcome. <laughs> so um, you can be genuine in that when you say that we, you know, we'll support you in any way we can. Super cool. I mean, it just fits into a topic that has been emerging on the podcast recently where you know, too many companies explain the plane and not the destination, mm -hmm. right? Or, yep. um, yeah, exactly. The, <laughs> the big picture, if you will. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Super interesting. Um, a question on this one, um, because you mentioned obviously that, you know, at the digital channels, you're leveraging Google quite a bit and LinkedIn. What role do you attribute to the website? Like, um, you know, how do you think about that for client acquisition? Yeah, so it's been really interesting. One of the first things I did when I joined was look at the different uh, patterns of page views. So when I, you know, whatever landing pages that people landed on, but then also from there, how many pages did they view depending where they started? Were they more likely to give us their information and what that looked like? Um, and it, it was really informative and allowed me to change up the navigation a little bit, but also test where these ads were going. 
And I have to tell you, I've never seen this in any other role that I've been in, but again, I think um, we're so young and still really earning that reputation in the space. I had never seen for a free content, you know, whatever it may be, how to, four tips, you know, to beat the line, almost always in prior roles and bigger organizations, you'll get that email and, and sure, then it's an uphill battle, right, as we all know, mm-hmm. getting them through the nurture and, and getting them, you know, qualified later, but, you know, that easy, that the initial part is easier. And content, um, it just isn't enough in this situation. It's been really interesting that we have to work a little bit harder to figure that out. So retargeting has been key. So most of our conversions have been through retargeting success, um, both on LinkedIn and on uh, the, on Google platforms. And so uh, we try to get them, you know, on the website, mainly to a very high level, what's our solution, and then rely on those retargeting efforts to then, you know, get them to take the bait, download a piece of content, enter that nurture stream. Interesting. Um, talking about the website there, um, the people that I have on the show are typically quite critical with their own website. And you mentioned already that, you know, mm-hmm. the level of um, in the, the journey, really, that you were describing has to be really yeah. thought through with retargeting and then content. Where, where do you see the strength of the website at the moment versus where do you see room for improvement to generate qualified leads? Sure. Uh, it's a great question. There's, it's, it's actually funny you say that I had never really picked up on that pattern, but I would say I'm also usually critical of the website of whatever brand I'm working on. So I'm good to know, you know, glad to know it's not just me. Um, but right now we're in a really interesting situation that the world is a little bit our oyster. So if you go to the Metrics website, which I would obviously encourage your listeners to do, um, it's pretty straightforward. So we have our homepage um, and then we have pages based on our different verticals, um, a pretty robust resources page. And that's, that's kind of it. We're really hoping again to hook you on uh, follow-up visits or, or through email communications and the like. And the challenge for that is, I think it's a little bit too still high level. So it's still a little bit hard to grasp the concept of what we offer, but where we struggle a little is how do we make it seem like this, um, you know, life altering platform services opportunity that you need to learn more about without it seeming overwhelming. So I think that's where we're a little bit challenged right now that um, we probably don't sell ourselves hard enough to be honest. And so that's, I think, a big opportunity that we'll be focusing on. Uh, And then we're also really doubling down on SEO. And so we're again in a really interesting position that uh, people are just kind of coming aboard, you know, in philanthropy on this concept of, of using a platform for impact analytics. So search volume is not that high, but that means that we have a huge opportunity to kind of get in now, right? So really double down on our pages and um, organic rankings and getting that site reputation up for Google as it becomes more popular. And so what's that balance of using these very straightforward t- terms because the market education is, is not super advanced. So they're searching, you know, what is social impact, which for us and the way we think of our clients, that's not really what we would have on the website because we we assume people know that already. So how can we kind of figure that out? And um, one way we've done it, which I think has really been successful is with our blog and then also just very simple um, Q&A sections at the bottom of those pages by vertical. And so that's been really um, a lift that we've, we've seen a lot of success with actually in the last month. Very cool. I mean, I can tell you're very in tune with the website. It was not a high level answer. This was very, very yeah. thoughtful and experienced. Well, hopefully helpful. Something. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I would love to talk with you a little bit about your experience in different marketing roles. You've um, obviously been in, in several industries, uh, mm-hmm. in, you know, leading marketing roles. What have you found generically to be the challenge when it comes to bringing innovation into the marketing function? Yeah, so I think the biggest challenge that I have found working, to your point across, I've been in really large organizations, in publishing, um, in tech, when, when they've been around for, you know, for a little bit, and then all the way um, to, to uh, metrics is very small, but also on the consumer brand side, been at, been at pretty small startups before this. And I think the biggest difference is um, that balance of kind of freedom that you're able to go out and test a lot and see what works. Um, but also knowing that at the end of the day, you, you know, rapid growth and, and hitting your revenue goals is, is going to be um, the bottom line. And so I think a little bit balancing that um, culture has been a little bit more challenging in these places that are less developed. And I'd say at metrics is one. So how can we make sure that, you know, we're, we're doing 
the nuts and bolts of setting the foundation so that we can really scale this marketing program and, and be set up. And, and that includes too, you know, product marketing, working with sales, working closely with product. Um, there's a lot of education that's happening too, as, as you kind of grow and, and scale. And how do you balance that with, um, with the fun stuff? And then where, you know, are able to uncover those really interesting uh, insights that, that might lead you to kind of this next, you know, big thing, whether it be a release or a vertical or whatever it may be. And so um, the freedom is nice in, in this kind of a role and you can have your hand in everything. Whereas mm -hmm. sometimes, as I'm sure you know, there can be a lot of layers when there's, you know, some of the bigger organizations, um, but at the same time you get the resources that come with it. And so it's just, it's just a little different <laughs> when you're uh, on each side. Very good. And you've seen, you've seen the both sides and you're still with the smaller side. So it seems like. I am. <laughs> I know every time, you know, when, when you're working the crazy hours and trying to, you know, to have your hands in everything, I'm like, do, do I really love this? And it's like, I think so. I, I like having, I like knowing everything that's going on. Right. And like being able to connect the dots. Um, I found that to be a little harder at bigger organizations um, just because th there's so much more going on. So it's, so it's difficult. Makes sense. I would love to learn a bit more about you, actually, and, and your journey uh, in marketing. Um, one thing I'm curious about is there's so much content, uh, uh, so much digital content on marketing, mm -hmm. on growth marketing. How do you decide, like, what do you consume versus what to just filter out because there's just so much stuff? Yeah. So, I mean, I do do, I think, what, what most of us do, right? Which So I do Google a little bit and look at different chat boards and like to go through um, what other people have tried and, and take ideas from that and kind of weight it right against maybe a, another source of information. Um, but I also really rely on my network and, and also on um, my LinkedIn network. And so I think it's really valuable of just kind of putting that question out to the world and chatting it through. And um, maybe it's being in New York City. And so everyone, you know, it's always kind of buzzing and ideas are flowing. But um, I just find that more often than not, people are excited to exchange ideas. And I think for me, that's the optimal way to do that. Um, I have tried to do some, you know, free tools, like maybe a general assembly, or um, I'm, I'm blanking on some of the other course websites, but mm -hmm. um, I just don't, I find that's a little bit too much in a vacuum, right? So, so I prefer to just go out, try it and What's the worst that happens, right? Just just try it at a, at a low scale level and it will be fine. Um, since we're slowly coming to an end of the interview, I would love to jump into our rapid fire questions. Are you ready for those? Okay, I think so. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> What's the last book you read? Um, the last book I read, I'm visualizing it uh, on the side of my nightstand and trying to remember um, what it was. Called. I just spent two weeks in Cape Cod, so I was able to read um, two books. It was the latest one from uh, Kristen Hanna, who read, who wrote *The Nightingale*. I can't, re I can't re remember the uh, no title offhand. No worries. What's the one single thing that your company is focused on the most at the moment? I would say the biggest thing we're focused on is the power of storytelling, which is something I've gotten really into. Speaking of research and talking to people, gone down rabbit holes, and it's. It's really interesting the history that storytelling kind of has and the power that it can hold when, you know, when a brand does it right. If there would be no boundaries in tech, what would be the one thing you would fix for your role? Good question. Um, I would say uh, all sorts of segmentation in Salesforce and I won't go deeper than that, <laughs> but uh, anyone who's, who's listening that works in Salesforce will know. They, they know the headaches. Um, <laughs> yeah. What is the last thing that kept you awake at night about the company? The last thing that kept me awake, I think, was really thinking about how we can nail uh, helping our client, to be honest. Again, it, we're so flexible and data is still such a scary word to, to, I think, a lot of people, not just in philanthropy, but especially in philanthropy, because there just historically has not been an investment in the capacity for especially nonprofits, but I'd say also foundations to give them the skill sets or the resources to do data collection and analysis. And so everything that I kind of come back to is how do I make it seem like a value add and something they're excited about and not just the one more thing, right? Or, or imagining, I don't know, all these calculations and uh, charts that just are overwhelming and not helping uh, their day to day, which is just getting, you know, we want them to get the time back and, and be able to get back in their communities, which is great. Very good. If you would allow me, I will do a little bit of time travel with you. Uh, okay. So we go back to the days of the Santa Clara University. 
Mm -hmm. and you, you know, finishing up education, you have the world open to you, you're heading out into your uh, marketing career. So mm -hmm. I would be curious, what is the one advice that you would give yourself? I think that I would have um, tried a little bit harder to um, just actively learn as much as I can talking to a lot of people and, and especially kind of learning on that baseline I just had for being in school and so green. Um, something I was just talking about with some coworkers here is I really miss that opportunity to learn, right? It's, a, it's such a unique um, situation in university. And I think as we get busier and busier and, you know, more things going on in life as you get older, it's easy to kind of get distracted. And so um, just being more of a sponge and kind of soaking up everything I, I could would have, would have been a smart choice, but um, we still made it here anyways. So we were able to do it. Um, but I think that would have been something really fun at that time that I didn't appreciate the free the free time, I think. Very insightful. Kim, I really appreciate you took the time with us today. Um, so we could learn from you and you shared us your story and your work with Upmetrics. I wanna give you the very last word. Like what would be the one thing if somebody would be forgetting all that we discussed today that one should be remembering about my Upmetrics? Yeah, I think the one thing to remember about Upmetrics, honestly, is just seeing the possibility in your day to day and kind of taking action. If you see an opportunity to do something better or to help, you know, another person and you have an area of expertise, think about how you can do that and kind of putting yourself in their shoes. And I think everything from how we were founded and right in that origin story of really acting on that to how we um, exist today, which is you know, putting the client first, saying, how can we really help them, you know, along their journey and, and get to this um, place of achieving their mission is so important and, and it's valuable to us. And I think that is that North Star just makes us really unique um, as a place to work, but also, you know, the end platform and services we provide. It's it's very genuine, um, which is exciting. And I, and I think too, it's it's a valuable tool that's that's needed. So we, so we toe the line of kind of um, pressuring philanthropy a little bit to, to get here with us, right? Um, and then also kind of advancing some of those pioneers too that, that are ready for the plunge. Thanks a lot for being a guest on Platform Presents. Yes, of course. Thanks for having me.